My name is Jake, welcome to the channel. Today we're gonna to do another Review My Pie video where I review subscriber portfolios. It's gonna be in a similar format, but before we dive into the video, I just wanna give some words of encouragement to everybody that is maybe new to investing or this is the, the first time that they're investing into this type of strategy. I'm 35 years old. I've invested into a Roth IRA, 401k through work. For those of you that know my story, I lived a long time in Europe, in Germany, where I was studying and, and working. And so I traveled a lot, so I didn't really get to invest a lot in my early 20s because I was traveling a lot. I had a, a lot of things going on. It wasn't until my late 20s, early 30s, where I really started focusing 100% on my goal here, or the goal that my wife and I have of retiring early, you know, reaching financial independence. For those of you that know my story, I transferred over my, my Robinhood account early in, you know, in the middle of 2019. It wasn't a lot of money. I mean, for me at the time, it was a lot of money. When I say a lot or a little, it's really relative to every person. Every person is in a different situation. But for me at the time, I mean, any amount of money is is a lot of, a lot of money. And so when I transferred over my portfolio from Robinhood, then I I really started consistently for the first time, apart from my 401k, investing into my portfolio. And as you can see here, that the value started to slowly increase as I increased the amount that I was investing every single week. I invest every single week into my portfolio. And then once the pandemic hit, the portfolio started going down a little bit. I started investing more. But what I want to get at here is it took up until about November of last year for me to hit $100,000 in this portfolio. I am now 35 years old. So I was 34 when I hit my first $100,000 in this portfolio, and really in, in any portfolio for the, for the most part. And what I wanna get at is it took about 34 years, my entire lifetime to get one single portfolio up to $100,000. And as we all know, as the market has rebounded here in 2020 and 2021, it only took nine months until I hit $200,000 here in July. I think it's just incredible. The The power of compounding is, is remarkable. Now, obviously a lot of this has to do with the market rebounding. It has to do with me getting a new job, investing more, cutting our expenses. But what I wanna share is, for those of you that are maybe a little bit discouraged, you know, getting your first $100,000 is the hardest part. And maybe there's one or two people out here that have to hear this or, or need to hear this. If you're discouraged, keep pushing, man. You got this. Keep going. It is a long, you know, a slow and steady process to wealth, but you can do it. In today's Review My Pie, we're going to review four portfolios. The first is going to be from an 18-year-old here in the U.S., the second, a 17-year-old from Spain, the third, a 45-year-old from the U.S., and then the fourth, a 52-year-old here in the United States. If you're looking or more interested in a different um, age group, you can check back and see my other videos I've shared on every single age group out there. And as always, the timestamps are in the description below, as well as the links are in the description below. And as always, everybody, I don't pre-script what I'm going to say in these videos. I'm looking at them for the very first time. I don't review in advance. I just open them up and, and start reviewing them. As always, everybody, I'm not a financial advisor, just a random dude on the internet. So please don't take what I'm saying as financial advice. It's just merely for your entertainment. And speaking of entertainment, a lot of people have been getting very creative and creating their own sports. Apparently, walking on crates is a thing now. So that happened. I'm going to give you the world. Oh my gosh. All right. So happy Sunday, everybody. All right. The first portfolio is from Michael. Michael writes, hello, sir. I'm currently 18 years old, living in the United States. I'm looking to retire in my 30s with approximately 750 to $1 million in the portfolio value. I'm putting $100 per month from money from my father gives me for helping around the house. But once I get a job going and putting, going to be putting about $500 a month into my Roth and the rest into an emergency fund until I get three to six months of expenses, really good idea, then aggressively invest into my taxable account. Let me know what you think about the portfolios. Any advice, comments are welcome. I hope you and your wife and the baby are healthy and I hope you have a great day. 
Hey, Michael, thank you so much. I appreciate the kind words. I saw that you sent me another email. So you actually have three portfolios. In the other email, you, you listed them all out. You have a taxable account, you have a Roth IRA, and you actually have a real estate portfolio like I do. So this is really interesting. Okay, so there's a lot of great stuff in here. So you're 18 years old, you have a goal of retiring at the age of 30. When you use the word retire, in my opinion, I would stress trying to substitute retire with financially independent. Financially independent gives you a lot more options than, than retirement. And this whole movement around financial independence and retire early, a lot of it has to do with your mindset and your opinion of defining the word retirement. What, what does it really mean to be retired? So in your case, what I would recommend you do is instead of saying, I'm going to retire in my 30s, I'd say I'm going to be financially independent in my 30s because you're likely still going to do other things, right? If you're 18 years old and you're already thinking about this topic, you're probably a lot different than a lot of your other friends who are not thinking about this topic. So you're probably very ambitious. And so I would kind of you know, get away from the retirement part and focus on financial independence. I really like the fact that you have goals. I would highly recommend working with a, you know, a, a dividend calculator. I always share in my in my links in the description, the, the dividend reinvestment calculator. If you haven't played with that, I would highly recommend playing around with the, the dividend reinvestment calculator, which will show kind of, you know, what you can assume, uh, you know, your future returns would be based off of historical returns, right, which are always never a guarantee. And then lastly, I really like your, your goal of having three to six months of expenses. I think that's not a bad idea. One thing that you could also even consider is if you wanted to leverage M1 borrow as a, as an emergency fund, that would also be an option. So something to ch check out is look into M1 borrow as a potential, uh, you know, emergency fund substitute, or maybe in addition, you know, it could complement your emergency fund. All right, let's look at your first portfolio. This is your Roth IRA. This, your portfolio is up a great amount. You have a really healthy dividend yield, a good expense ratio. You only have ETFs. I really, really like this. I like that you only have ETFs. You're 18 years old, you're not gonna be able to really tap in to your, ideally tap into your, your Roth IRA until you're 59 and a half. So you have a long time for this portfolio to compound. I like that you're focused on growth. I really, really like this. So having VOO in here at the highest, I think that's a great idea. I like VOG, this is the, the Vanguard Growth ETF. I like VIG, um, but in my opinion, check out VGT. VGT also may be a really, really good option in here. Um, VNQ, yeah, I think having it at 15% is fine. And VXUS at 10%, this is fine. I really like this because your Roth IRA is a passive investment. You're not gonna ideally touch it for the next, what, 40 plus years. Um, the cool thing about the Roth IRA compared to the uh, traditional is it can also act as an emergency fund because you can take out your contributions tax and penalty free out of a Roth IRA. So your Roth IRA could actually act as an emergency fund if you had to. So there's a lot of flexibility that comes with the Roth IRA. This is a great portfolio. I like that it's focused on ETFs. I like the breakdown. I like that you don't have too much focused on international. You don't have too much focused on real estate. Uh, the only one that I would maybe consider is VGT. This is the uh, the technology uh, ETF from Vanguard. But, uh, but yeah, really, really strong portfolio. All right, let's look at your next portfolio. This is your taxable account. You got labeled cash flow just like I do. So I'm assuming this is for your passive income. This is cash flow is all about passive income. You have a very healthy dividend yield of 2%. Um, you said you wanted to tap into the dividend in your 30s, so that gives you over 10 years. Um, yeah, you could, if if that really is your goal, you could do two, try to try to keep it between two and three percent. Um, probably closer to two and a half percent, at least when you're first starting out. But the market has gone up really high, so there's a reason why this the yield has gone down because the portfolio value has gone up or the, the share price. The, the market is just overall really expensive. So you got dividend growth ETFs, you got tech, consumer staples, you got utilities, healthcare, industrials. Okay, the portfolio is set up very well. I, I like it how you have it set up. And once again, like this is the this is the interesting thing. You're 18 years old. Your goal is to be financially independent slash retired in your 30s. So you're not gonna invest like a traditional 
18 year old, right? Because you have a clear goal of this portfolio, either substituting or, you know, your, your day job or completely taking over from your day job. So you're going to invest differently. If you were to say, yeah, I'm 18 years old, but my time horizon is 40 years. Well, then I would say, well, maybe you want to focus a little bit more on growth. So it's very, very important. If you're watching this video and you're watching my channel for the first time, that is why it's so, so important. If you've been following the channel for a while, you know I always talk about time horizon. That really dictates how you construct your portfolio. Let's take a look at your first uh, one here. You got VIG, SCHD, and DGRO. These are, these are really, really great. Okay, so this is the only constructive thing that I would say. If your time horizon is 10 to 15 years, VIG is not the best or the most optimal investment for if you're gonna live off the dividend. VIG is more for a 25, 30 year time horizon. Like it, it's more closer to like VOO in terms of the dividend and the dividend growth. Um, if your time horizon is 10 to 15 years, this is this is just not the most optimal investment for you. It's a great a great ETF. You know, you look at the dividend appreciation, but not for a 10 to 15 year time horizon. SCHD is by far the best. DGRO is good. Um, I think, in my opinion, uh, VYM would maybe be a better substitute, or you could put uh, you know 50 percent in SCHD. Uh, 25 in VYM. I, I don't know. I'm just kind of spitballing. Um, but most definitely, if you have a 10 to 15 year time horizon, uh, you either need to lower this dramatically or even consider swapping it out. Uh, technology, you got Apple and Microsoft. Yeah, these, these are great. Um, I think this will add a good layer of the growth component to your portfolio. So I think that's fine, even at 12%, I think it's great. Consumer staples, household products, you got P, uh, Procter & Gamble, Kimberly Clark, and uh, Clorox, these are household. Okay, I'm trying to think. Yeah, these are these are these are fine. Let me see. What is the percentage? Nine percent. Yeah. Okay. I think this could be fine. I like that you have household products in here. You probably are a consumer of Procter and Gamble goods, Kimberly Clark. You probably have Kleenexes in your house. You probably have Clorox wipes in your house. Like it's important to invest in it, companies that you know. Uh, food and beverage, Costco, Coca Cola, and Pepsi. Yeah, these are these are really really great. I'm a big fan of Pepsi. I think all I think these three companies are, are really good. I have to remember, I remind myself, I mean, you're 18 years old, um, really focusing on companies that you have heard of, uh, maybe you're a consumer of, etc. Utilities, you got Next Era Energy, American Waterworks, Southern Company, Duke, man, you have been doing, holy cow, you're 18 years old and you're, dude, this is a really, these are really great. Um, I wouldn't change anything. <laughs> I wouldn't change anything. This is great. Uh, you got Next Air Energy at the top, American Waterworks. Man, you've been doing your homework. You're 18 years old and your portfolio is set up like this. Holy cow. Uh, Johnson & Johnson, Avi, Pfizer. Yeah. Um, do, 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 do. I like that you have Pfizer at the lowest. Johnson & Johnson higher. Yeah. I mean, for your time horizon of 10 to 15 years, sure. I mean, you could even bump up Abvi and Pfizer a little bit because of your time horizon. So, so important you understand that. But uh, yeah, I, I think that's fine. Industrials, 3M, Waste Management, love it. Caterpillar, Lockheed Martin, Legan and Platt. Yeah, I think this is, I think this is fine. I really, <laughs> I'm impressed. Uh, consumer cyclicals, Target, McDonald's, Starbucks, Home Depot, equally weighted for the most part. Absolutely fine. Financials, Visa, T. Rowe and JP Morgan. Um, yeah, I, I, I like this. Uh, yeah, I mean, you could look at Aflac or, or SPGI, but I mean, these are, these are absolutely fine. How many you got in here? 32? Okay, you're, you're 18 years old. I think keeping it around 30, 32 is a good, healthy number. Um, it's a good number to start out with. Uh, you could even have fewer and you would be fine. Uh, Verizon, AT&T. AT&T is a, it's a pure telecom company. I, Everybody that's been following the channel, you know I, I'm not a big fan of AT&T anymore. Um, I, I completely took it out of my portfolio. Uh, Verizon, yeah, I, I'm a huge fan of Verizon. If you wanted another growth component, you could throw in you know, Comcast. Uh, that would be fine. Um, but yeah, man, as it stands, this portfolio is spectacular. Like This is such a great portfolio. I like it. I like it a lot. 
All right, your real estate portfolio, for whatever reason, the, the charts here on M1 Finance is not working. It's kind of annoying, but whatever. Uh, let's see here, you got 23 holdings, you got re-ETFs, retail data center specialty. So it's fairly set up, set up fairly similar to my portfolio. Uh, yeah, these are the these are really great ETFs. The reason why these are great ETFs is you're getting exposure to all all of real estate at a low expense ratio. Really, really good. These are the three best REITs out there. I personally own VNQ, um, but all three of these. If you're going to own a REIT ETF, these are the best of the best. Um, retail. You got Realty Income, WPC, WPC, eh, yeah, okay. Uh, it's more of a diversified, but you got Store, triple, uh, triple N, and you got FRT. These are great. Let's see here. You got uh, 10%. Okay, okay. Data Centers, DLR, and Equinix. Yep, absolutely great. Specialty, Crown Castle and American Tower, exactly how I have it. Uh these are also great. So you, you've definitely molded your portfolio based off of my holdings. What I would say is make sure, Michael, make sure that you're doing the research on these companies, right? You, you've you you've drafted your portfolio very similarly to, to my portfolio, which is, hey man, I, I love my portfolio. I've done a lot of research. It's my portfolio because I feel comfortable with it because I've done the research. What I would encourage you to, to make sure that you're doing is this is a great place to start but now you really got to do your homework and make sure that you are, are you know, you want to hold these companies as well. The reason why that's important, the reason why you don't want to just blindly copy another person's portfolio, even if it's a great portfolio, is you have to have conviction in these companies. I'll give you an example. Back in the financial crisis of 08 and 09, you know, you saw the market drop 50%. Real estate dropped over 50%. If you don't know what you're invested in and you just take you know, exa you know, companies from other people and you don't know how the company generates revenue, it becomes very emotional. Investing is emotional. And when you see the portfolio drop 20%, 30%, 50%, your emotions tend to take over because you're human. Human beings, we're emotional. Um, you need to know how these companies generate the revenue and you need to have conviction in them. Otherwise, when the market is down, you may make the wrong decision, you want to make sure that you keep your emotions, emotions intact. That's why it's so, so important. But as it stands, these companies are great. I mean, I talked about OHI, uh, UHT is great, VTR. These are, these are great, great healthcare. I talked about MPW in my last REIT video, some really great healthcare REITs. Industrials, Prologis and Stack, man, this is perfect. These are the two best uh, industrial REITs out there, in my opinion. Uh, apartments, EQR, Avalon Bay, S S um, ESS, and then CPT. Yeah, these are fine. Um, yeah, man, like this is this is a great portfolio. It's it's very similar to my portfolio. There are a few differences, but yeah, as I mentioned, make sure you're doing your own research. Make sure you understand how these companies generate their revenue. But as it stands, these are three great portfolios that you have. Thank you so much for sending over your portfolio. And uh, right now, you're 18 years old. What it comes down to is those three things. Look to stay out of consumer debt, cut your expenses, and look for new ways to make more money. And uh, you know, and then dollar cost average into your portfolio, and you'll be amazed at how fast your portfolio will grow. Thanks again, Michael. The next portfolio is from Sam. Sam writes, hi, Jake. I'm 17 years from Spain, and I've been watching your channel for about a half a year. I agree with a lot of your investing philosophy and found your videos to be very informative. Thank you, Sam. I appreciate it. Started investing in October of 2020, and my portfolio is hovering around 22,000 euros at 17. What? Investing regularly, 85% of what I make. I don't have a goal in mind when investing and just hope to build financial security so I don't have to go through what my parents went through in 2008, all in on real estate. Wow, man, you're 17 years old and you've already, wow. I plan on selling Hermes and Aina in the near future. So my question is, if, you, uh, if I should buy an ETF or a few individual stocks and which ones you would recommend for someone who has a lot of time ahead, so a long-term time horizon. I would lastly like to say the reason I bought Exxon was because I thought it was very cheap and hammered down by activists, you know, and, and plus the bug. Uh, this is planned to be a three to five year holding. Uh, keep up the great work, Samuel. Okay, so um, the fact that you have 22,000 euros at 17, I mean, this is incredible. You're, you're obviously living at home, I would assume, you know, if you're saving 85% of your income, you probably have a side hustle. Maybe, you know, maybe you, you do something on the side to generate income. Maybe you, 
I, I don't know. There's a lot of things that you can do at 17 years old to generate income. Let's see. So selling out of something, it should you buy an individual stock or an ETF? I think, you know, if it never hurts to buy a broad-based ETF like the S&P 500, for example, if you're a long-term investor, given that the S&P 500 is at all-time highs, it's kind of, you know, kind of feels weird to buy something at the high, uh, you know, I, I understand that. Maybe you could dollar cost average into, you know, maybe a, a broad-based uh, ETF. You could also look at other companies that are maybe on sale. Uh, if you're invested into Exxon, Exxon is an oil company. Maybe, uh, you know, you could look at some, you know, REITs like OHI is trading at a good discount right now. Uh, MPW is a hospital REIT. And if you're into it, not everybody is, but there's a lot of value in sin stocks in tobacco companies right now. British Tobacco, Altria Group, for example, are trading at really, really low PEs. And so if you're into that, you could check those out. So let's take a look at your portfolio. You got Exxon here, you got Goldman Sachs, you got Nintendo, Advi, the one that you're gonna sell, um, ML, Hermes, Coca-Cola, VC, okay, VC. That one's been really, really popular lately. You got a few other YouTubers talking about VC. Um, they just acquired MGM. It's gonna be interesting. I'm not the biggest fan of it because it's more of a cyclical um, industry, but I think for you know that growth component of your portfolio, I think it's going to be really, really interesting. Verizon, WPC, great, really, really strong REIT. I talked about this one in the in a recent video a couple months ago. And Pepsi, this is great, man. Like you even have the uh, the dollar amounts, number of shares. You're tracking this. Let's take a look at the uh, the weighting here. So you got a lower amount of Pepsi, a large amount of Exxon. Okay, all right. So you mentioned that you were going to sell it. Uh, I don't know a lot of 17 year olds that, that are banking on oil to, you know, to appreciate, like I, I would think that you would bank more on like Microsoft or, or Apple or Sony or Nintendo, not a, you know, old school oil company that, that surprises me. Yeah. I'm not the biggest fan of it. I personally wouldn't do it. Uh, but that's just my opinion. I mean, the, the oil is rebounded incredibly so whom one of my who am i to say you know do this or that i don't have a crystal ball but i personally i could never see myself doing that if i were going to bank on on something to appreciate over the next three three to five years it would be something that i would plan on i would be comfortable holding for the next 10 to 15 years should it not rebound right so that's kind of my uh, risk tolerance um, and then the others are pretty equally, you know, weighted. I like keeping individual stocks. If you own individual stocks, try to keep it, uh, you know, at about five or less percent. If you have an individual stock over 5%, it's just a lot of unnecessary risk. There's a lot of great companies out there. This does not include ETFs. So you can have ETFs above the, uh, as long as it's not a sector only ETF, like don't go too crazy on that. But, um, you know, broad-based ETFs like SEHD or the total stock market, the percentage, you can go as high as you want. But on individual stocks, try to keep it around around or lower than 5%, and that'll be a good way to manage your risk. Sam, thanks for sending over your portfolio. I think this is great. I don't know a lot of 17-year-olds that have $22,000 in their portfolio. The one thing, though, huge red flag is the Exxon. Once again, if I were to do something like that, it would be an investment where if it weren't to rebound in the next five years, I'm still comfortable holding on to it for the next 10, 20 or you know, forever, right? So that's that's just my opinion. But uh, but yeah, thank you so much for sending over your portfolio. All right, the next portfolio is from Jose. He writes, my name is Jose, 45 years old from the Bronx in New York, looking to retire in the next 15 to 20 years. I have other investments like Fundrise, a few American Express CD, and a Roth IRA with M1. Let me know if I have to do anything to my pie to help it grow faster. I'm planning to deposit $1,000 a month. Thank you for your time. Well, hey, Jose, thank you so much for the kind words. Let's take a look at your portfolio. So the, the chart here, once again, is not working. I don't know why that is. Um, you got 50 holdings to a little over 2% dividend yield and a low expense ratio. Okay, so the first thing that I would say, if you're looking to you know, retire in the next 15 to 20 years, um, this isn't a Roth IRA, so you're getting uh, the best, you know, you're taking advantage of a tax sheltered account, so you're not gonna be getting any tax advantages now, but once you reach 59 and a half, all of your, your gains will be tax-free. 
So there's a big advantage there. Let's see how you have it set up. You got technology, healthcare, finance, real estate, consumers, bonds, utilities, telecom, industry, and energy. Okay, so this is a little bit different than the first portfolio. Remember in the first portfolio, um, I think it was Michael, he had a Roth IRA. And just in his Roth IRA, he only had four or five ETFs right? I personally am a bigger fan of that. If you have a 20, 30 or 40 year time horizon, I think sticking with ETFs is great. Now with Jose, he has a, you know, a 15 to 20 year time horizon. So maybe he's going to get a, he wants to be a little bit more hands-on or proactive with his portfolio, which is completely fine. It, it really depends on your personal preference. If you want to, you know, if you want growth in the portfolio, you, you need to focus on growth. If you've been following my channel, um, I talk a lot about the rule of 72. The rule of 72 is how long it will take an investment to double. So if an investment is growing, you know, for example, at two or 3% a year, it's gonna take a long time for bonds to double. So if your goal is, well, how do I grow my portfolio fast? Well, the simple answer is focus on growth. Um, now, obviously with that, with that statement, there's gonna be more implied volatility. If you're focused on growth, growth, you're, you're getting paid for that growth, right? You're, the volatility is part, part of it. Investors assume that there will be volatility, but they will be rewarded for that volatility when they're focusing on growth. So that's the very first thing. How do you get more growth? Well, you focus on growth sectors or growth industries, I guess you could say, and focus on investments that are growing year over year faster. So right off the bat, bonds, these are like the anti-growth. The way that you have to think about it, if you wanna focus on growth, you're in wealth accumulation mode. You're growing, you're trying to grow your portfolio. Bonds are all about preservation, preserving your wealth, right? So they're two very different things. It's so important that you understand that. So bonds not growing, they're more to preserve your wealth. That would be the same thing kind of like with, with gold or other asset classes, right? So let's take a look. If you, if you wanna grow your portfolio faster, um, there's two components. There's the capital appreciation and then there's the dividend. Um, at this point in a Roth IRA, you really want to focus on the total return. And it, that's my opinion. And so you want to focus what's going to give you the largest total you know, growth of your total portfolio. That being the, the share price plus the, the dividend income that you're getting. Technology, you got Visa, Tesla, Alibaba, Microsoft, and Apple. These are really, really growth uh, companies. And yeah, if you want growth, you're gonna get a lot of growth from Tesla and from Visa, right? Really, really great. I'm a big fan of Microsoft and Apple as well. Healthcare, okay, you got Johnson & Johnson, Merck, MDT. This is a great growth one. You got Abvi, also really grow, growth oriented. Yeah, these, these companies are great. They kind of serve a different purpose, right? Pfizer traditionally has been more for current income. Now with Kathy Wood purchasing Pfizer, it's kind of uh, gonna be a, it's leaning more towards towards a meme stock at this point, but traditionally it's it's a it's an income uh, stock. Avi is a really great balance between capital appreciation and growth, uh, dividend growth. So some great companies in here. You got your finance, you got your JP Morgan, your Bank of America, you got your Afflex. So you have a mixture of growth and income, right? You got some income in here. Toronto banks, some Canadian banks in here. Obviously, if you want to get more growth, you skew more towards PayPal, right? PayPal, more towards T Row, more towards Aflac, and not so much towards your traditional banks, right? So that's that's how you, you get more growth. But by doing so, if you focus more on Aflac and PayPal, your dividend is going to go down. So your dividend income is going to go down, but your your portfolio will grow faster right? So it's kind of a trade-off. And in a Roth IRA in 20 years, you could always then sell PayPal, you know, which would have hopefully grown faster over the next 15 years, and you'll pay no capital gains tax, and then you could reposition into maybe a, a JP Morgan, which pays a higher dividend. So there's a lot of things that you can do, and that's that's why, you know, I'm a huge fan of, you know, the Roth IRA. You don't pay any taxes. Um, it's great. Uh, Realty Income Store, Well Tower, LTC, and Simon Property. Yeah, these are not really, really strong, you know, dividend growth companies. If you want your dividend growth, you want your data centers, you want your, you know, your your industrials, your your specialty reads, you know, your you know st stuff like that, like uh, Crown Castle, American Tower, uh, Prologis, 
uh, DLR, you know, et cetera. Consumers, you got Pepsi, Disney, great growth companies here already. Target, Target is, I think, the highest performing company in my portfolio. Uh, Comcast, Coca-Cola, Nike, SDLR. These are, this is a good consumer. It's a balance between discretionary and staple. This is a good growth uh, slice. This is a good one. I like this. Bonds, yeah, if you want growth, man, you know, bonds are, are you know, you could, you could, uh, you could get out of bonds and, and transition to other other industries, and you'll get more growth. Utilities, Dominion, Southern Company, Duke, and Next Year Energy. Yeah, these are these are great. I own actually all all four of these in my portfolio. They're great. Uh, telecom, <laughs> AT and T, and Verizon. We know what I what I think about with AT and T. Uh, industrials, Union Pacific, Waste Management, Lockheed Martin, 3M. Yeah, these are great. Another one you could take a look at is Honeywell. Honeywell is great. Uh, Caterpillar, but these are these are great companies. Um, energy, you got Chevron and Exxon Mobil. Okay, so if you wanted more growth, what you could do is you could uh, you could potentially consider removing energy. You could lower utilities, though you do have a lot of growth utility in here. Um, you could lower remove bonds, just something to consider, and you could reposition this weighting into a higher growth uh, slice. That's something that you can do if you if your clear goal, as you mentioned in your email, was to get more growth, that's how you get it. You're going to get more capital appreciation, but likely your dividend yield will go down. But over the long term, the dividend growth rate will be higher. And so it will compound uh, faster towards the end once you get into that 15 to 20 year time horizon. Jose, thank you so much for sending over your portfolio. I hope that this was helpful. All right, the last portfolio here is from Nat. I hope that I'm pronouncing your name right. I apologize if I'm not. Um, you write here, hi Jake, my name is Nat. I'm watching your videos every week and I really like it. I deposit to my account $500 a week and I'd like to know how much dividend uh, can I annually get in 10 years? I will keep my stocks in ETFs for live off dividend when I retire. Any advice from you would be appreciated. Well, thank you so much, man. I really appreciate that you're, you're watching the videos every single week. That really, really puts a smile on my face. I've gotten a few emails from you. Uh, this appears to be the, the most updated portfolio that you've sent me. So you have about 10 years. You're looking to live off of your portfolio. Um, it sounds like you have a balance of ETFs and stocks. You're uh, depositing $500 a week. Okay, that's great. Um, once again, if you're if you're interested in like, well, how much can I realistically expect in, in dividend income in the future? I'd recommend playing around with the dividend reinvestment calculator. It will be, the link to that will be in the pinned comment below. All right, so let's look at your portfolio. Um, I don't know why the, the graph here is not working, but you have 43 holdings. This is a good amount. It's a good amount. You got a, over a 3% dividend yield. This is really good. And you have a low expense ratio. I wish that we could see this. Wow. So this is a really, really strong, these are really good, strong macros, really good numbers. So you got the highest allocation to VYM and SEHD. This is so, so great, especially if you have a 10 year time horizon. These are some of my favorite ETFs when it comes to, you know, high dividend ETFs for a 10 year time horizon, really, really strong. Another, you know, a few others that you could take a look at are, I'm a big fan of a few cover call ETFs. My two favorite cover call ETFs are JEPI from JP Morgan and then NUSI uh, NUSI. Really, really great div, um, cover call ETFs. I'm a big fan of. I made a video on both of those on the channel here if you want to check those out. I mean, you got Pepsi, Procter & Gamble, Kimberly Clark, strong consumer, consumer companies here. You got Johnson & Johnson, 3M. You got Westlake Chemical. Okay, this is not one that I see a lot. Um, maybe you are familiar with the company. I, I don't see this company a lot. You got VPU. This is a this is a really good uh, industry specific um, ETF. I own this in my portfolio as well. You got Philip Morris. This is a really strong tobacco company. Philip Morris is focused more on the on international. It's not focused on the U.S. Uh, like Altria Group is. Kellogg is a really, really great company. I own this in my portfolio. DGRO, really strong dividend growth ETF. I own in this my in my portfolio. EPD, I can't tell you how many times my dad sends me 
text messages about this company telling me to review EPD. Every article on dividend investing talks about EPD. I, yeah, it's it's a great current income uh, company. Duke, really, really strong uh, ut growth utility. Caterpillar, amazing. British Tobacco, great. Oh my gosh, there it is. Jeppy, beautiful. Uh, you you must be following the channel or, or something. This is great. Abby, really strong. Coca-Cola, great. Cisco, this is a good blue chip telecom company, a telecom slash technology company. What's going to be interesting is I used to work at a competitor of Cisco. So I know this space very, very well. Cisco, unless they, you know, aggressively either partner or acquire uh, VoIP providers, VoIP, uh, voice over IP, uh, you know, technology companies, they're going to really struggle as a legacy, uh, you know, phone company. But they've made a, they've made a few shifts towards, towards VoIP, uh, which is interesting. That's why I don't talk a lot about this. I mean, for those of you that follow the channel, I work in the technology space. Like, I know these companies. I, I know tech companies. Um, I don't talk a lot about them, though. Uh, Altria Group, great. This is the, uh, the uh, I guess, the opposite of Philip Morris here, right? You got Philip Morris International. Uh, you got Altria Group, just the US. Waste Management, great company. One of my favorite uh, growth uh, industrial companies. WPC, love it. Verizon, Raytheon, yeah, great uh, southern company. I'm, I'm actually a bigger fan of, of Lockheed Martin. I, I'm a bigger fan of Lockheed Martin. I own General Dynamic as well, um, but... Uh, yeah, Southern Company, great. VNQ, great. VGT, VEO, uh, Target, Lowe's. Oh, you got Loki Martin right there. Omega Healthcare, Nixer Energy, Merck, IBM. IBM is a is a good one for you know current income. Uh, I work in the tech space. Nobody talks about IBM. Nobody talks about it. It's all Microsoft. It's Amazon. It's Salesforce. IBM is. I mean, they're huge, but. The only way that I see IBM continue to grow is through acquisition. It's just kind of how it is. Uh, JP Morgan, Chevron, Broadcom, DLR, good, Pfizer, Microsoft. Well, not, I really, really like your portfolio. This portfolio resonates so well with me because it, it follows a very similar strategy as my own, right? You have a component in here with high quality ETFs, right? You got VYM and SCHD, you got VPU. All of those I own in my portfolio. DGRO, I own in my portfolio. I own VNQ, I own VGT. Every ETF in here, I own myself. The majority of these I own in my portfolio as well. But what I like about this is you have the growth component and you have the current income component, right? You have Omega Healthcare, which yields just around 8% right now. You have a few SIN stocks in here, right? That are growing slower, but they produce a high amount of income. This is a great portfolio for a 10-year time horizon. I, I absolutely love it. I really, really like this portfolio. You have a handful of ETFs in here. So realistically, you just have right around 35 or so individual companies. This is a phenomenal portfolio. And it's not one that's going to really take a long time or a lot of time to follow up on because these are really high quality companies. Thank you so much for sending over your portfolio. Wow, I thought these were four really great portfolios. Something that's really interesting that I try to stress over and over again is time horizon. It doesn't matter if you're 18, you're 17, 40, or 50. The way that you invest in this type of strategy, it really depends on your goal, what your time horizon is, when you plan on leveraging that dividend. And depending on that, that's how you should be investing. That's how you build your portfolio. And if you don't know what your time horizon is, that's the first thing to focus on. The sooner that you can define your time horizon, the easier it will be to construct and build your portfolio so that it meets your goals. Thank you so much, everybody, for watching. I hope that you learned something new. I hope that these videos are helpful. And I'll catch everybody in the next video. You know what? I think we're going to be friends. Can everyone say hi to my friend? That's crazy. I just wanted to say thanks. I'm glad you came along, partner.